Hi, I'm Marvin Plackett, and today is Thursday, December 3rd. Greetings to all residents, to all staff, and to all guests. Um, at this time, we have 14 active COVID cases. Uh, so that is up a bit from when I was with you last on Monday. And, uh, you know, we knew that it's going to be hard to keep it stable or decrease when it's COVID is all around us and it's surging. Uh, throughout Minnesota and throughout the United States. So we're actually still rather pleased that we have 14 at this time. We have nine residents and five staff. Four of those residents are from Episcopal Church Home and five are at Cardi Heights. And uh, we're doing our best, of course, to contain it at Cardi Heights. Um, everybody there has their own apartment, so they're able to isolate. Uh, but with the uh, various languages and cultures, sometimes communication isn't the easiest and so forth. So we're working hard. Carrie and her team, they're working very hard uh, to make sure that everybody is um, isolated um, in their apartments. All their needs are being met uh, while they recover. And at Episcopal Church Home, of course, uh, the residents there are in our dedicated COVID unit um, at the Episcopal Church Home. Um, all the staff, of course, they are quarantining at home um, and recovering, and they will not be scheduled to work until they're fully recovered. Um, testing continues at both our nursing homes, um, as I've mentioned many times before. I want to uh, quote from a couple of uh, articles in the Star Tribune. I'm just going to read a few excerpts here and there. First one, front page, Star Tribune today. U.S records highest daily death toll. <clears throat> the United States on Wednesday recorded its single worst daily death toll since the pandemic began, um, and the hospitalizations hit an all-time high. The pace of loss showed no signs slowing anytime soon. Uh, the high point, let's see, so uh, the, rec the deaths recorded yesterday in the U.S. were 2,760. The highest prior to that was for a single day was on April 15th, and that was 2,752. Um, so our highest death toll in the U.S. was yesterday. <clears throat> Hospitalizations from the virus topped 100,000, more than double the number at the beginning of November. So just over a course of one month, we went from 50,000 hospitalizations in the U.S. to 100,000 over the course of just one month. It sure shows how the surge is having uh, a really strong impact. Uh, in April, the virus and the deaths were concentrated in New York and New England. Today, the pandemic's toll is being felt across the country. That's exactly right. Uh, a second article uh, in today's Star Tribune, Minnesota Eyes Shorter Quarantine. Um, and uh, again, just reading a few excerpts. Minnesota health officials are considering shortening quarantines for people exposed to the uh, virus. That doesn't mean they have the virus, they were just exposed. They're considering shortening the quarantine of people, um, uh, yeah, for the virus. Uh, the CDC on Wednesday announced that local public health agencies could opt to shorten 14-day quarantines to 10 days if people have no symptoms, or even seven days if they have no symptoms and test negative. Uh, but the Minnesota Infectious, uh, I should say, Infectious Disease Director in Minnesota, Chris Ayersman, said it isn't a slam dunk for a state that is at the peak of its uh, pandemic wave. Minnesota's rate of infections has been failing, excuse me, Minnesota's rate of infections has been falling, but was listed as the highest in the nation yesterday, Wednesday, um, as tracked by the COVID exit strategy website. Uh, we're currently in the peak of transmission right now, Ayersman said. So even if you're talking about a small proportion of increased risk, then you've got so much viral activity that is something you need to consider. Uh, Ayersman said a decision in Minnesota on a shorter quarantine would be made in the next couple of days, but that people for now need to stick to the 14 days. So stay tuned. That's what I'll certainly be doing. That's what we'll be doing here at Episcopal Homes. For right now, the quarantine time is 14 days uh, from exposure, uh, but we'll see whether or not that is adjusted in Minnesota anytime soon. Remember how crucial it is to do all the little things right all the time. Wearing a face mask, physical distancing of at least six feet apart, 
frequent hand washing, and if you have any symptoms, to isolate and get tested. And how should you get tested? As I mentioned on Monday, uh, three ways. One is be in contact with the healthcare provider. They might have you go to the clinic. Another is to go to the Minnesota Department of Health website, and it's very easy to follow the places you need to go. They have COVID information, and then they have where to get tested. And you can. there are free sites in the metro area, and in fact, throughout the state of Minnesota, there are free places to go get tested, testing sites. Uh, sponsored by the Minnesota Department of Health, or you can request an in-home test where it's mailed to you, but then you have to have lead time, uh, or, or allow lead time of about a week or 10 days, I'm not sure how long, uh, and then you send in that sample, and then the result comes back in, as I understand, within a couple of days. Um, so, those are your options for how to get tested. Here's a message that was sent to me by or given to me by Kelly Reynolds, who lives at Iris Park Commons. And I thought this is such a uh, appropriate and wise message that I need to read it to you. So quoting from Kelly, one of the kindest things you can do for someone during this pandemic is wear your mask and remind others to wear theirs and to wear it in the right way, covering the mouth and nose and to assist someone with getting their mask on if they need the help. We're protecting one another when we do this. We are then a community that looks out for one another. Do this act of kindness, and we recognize that it's difficult wearing a mask at all times, but it's the right thing to do. It's that act of kindness. It makes a real difference. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Kelly, for that message. Volunteers are needed. Okay, here's a, uh, here's a flyer from the head of our volunteer program, Stacy. Read your favorite children's book on Zoom to our kinder friends. As our guest reader, you get the chance to see your book light up some bright sunny faces. Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. beginning December 3rd. Contact Stacy at 651 281-288-3688 or S. Dunn, and that is S-D-U-N-N, -N, at episcopalhomes.org, okay? So S. Dunn, D-U-N-N, -N, at episcopalhomes.org to sign up for a slot. Stacy is also available to practice Zoom and locate a children's book for you to read if needed fun thing to do. All right. Highly recommend. Okay. I will see you on Monday. I look forward to it. Be sure to be safe. Um, the virus is surging. It's not letting up anytime soon. The experts are saying that December, January, February, they're going to be tough months. So take care of yourself. Take care of your neighbors. Take care of your loved ones. Wear a mask physically distance, wash your hands frequently, and if you have any symptoms, isolate and get tested, all right? Do it for yourselves, do it for others, do it for the community. All right, now to uh, bring some joy our way, we have Mary Jo Hickok, who lives at Cornelia House. Thanks, Mary Jo. Hello, I'm Mary Jo Hickok, and I'm glad to see you today. I have brought you two pieces that I've written. Uh, they're short. Uh, one is an oak ode, and you'll recognize the oak that I'm talking about, I'm sure. From my bedroom window, I see the oak sentinel standing in the asphalt parking lot amid a pool of bland rocks. It bends south, pushed by north winter winds. Come fall, I say goodbye to this star, stout soldier who stands guard for us. For 10 years I have watched, expecting it to lean so far that it falls over, unable to bend through one more freezing season. Come spring, it delivers a surprise of fresh leaf greenness to soften the oak's skeleton. Come spring, it says, fool you, I'm still here. So am I, for now. 
Now, this is the season for uh, remembering you, things that you did with your family, things you did when you were a kid around Christmas celebrations. And I, I find that it's, it's, um, it comes back more and more every year. So this year I read, I wrote December 24th, 1945. I crept downstairs. The old wood creaks announced my steps. My heart hammered, what waited for me? Hands hid my eyes till the last minute. Now, Mary Jo, look. And there in front of my eight-year-old self and the Christmas tree covered in old frosted balls and pine cones and paper chains and popcorn strings and icicles and shiny lights and a gold star on top. In front of all of that stood a bright blue Schwinn two-wheeler for me. Longing for a bike was so fierce it hurt, but I knew it was way beyond the possible for my family. And yet, here it was. I rode strange paths through the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, and up to the front door. Grandma's patience allowed for as many circuits as I needed. Up to the front door, then bumping down the porch steps and into the snow. Sidewalks with new snow allowed smooth going. The fat tires left my mark behind the bike. And the freedom the freedom of moving, gliding so quickly stayed with me as I hefted that machine back up onto the porch. After snow melt was wiped off tires and spokes, the bike settled into its winter home, the back corner of the dining room, to wait for the next carpet ride or spin around the block. That's it.